Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 22nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you have kids, you may have heard of Fortnite, a game that has become very popular this year. So far, the game has not been available for Android, but it is supposed to arrive for Android this summer. Malware authors are now taking advantage of this. The malware, which was found by Malwarebytes, copied artwork from the iOS version of Fortnite to appear legitimate. After this fake game displays the artwork and does play an introduction sequence that's also copied from the iOS version, the fake game will ask the user to verify that they're human by downloading and installing additional software. So in essence, this malware doesn't actually use any exploit, but instead takes advantage of the user to install additional applications. At this point, nothing too malicious appears to be installed. It redirects the user back to the Google Play Store, but probably whoever does this then gets some commission for getting people to install these other applications. And Talking about taking advantage of users, WannaCry is still used to trick users. While the malware itself is long gone, new attacks just claim that users are infected by WannaCry and use the high name recognition of the malware to trick the user then into installing additional software or even trick them into paying ransom. The United Kingdom's National Fraud and Cyber Reporting Center published an email that it received over 200 emails from users reporting one of the extortion scams. The email asks for $650 in Bitcoin and threatens to delete all data on Friday the 22nd, so today. Cisco released 21 bulletins on Wednesdays. There are too many to cover them really all, but note that five of them are rated critical by Cisco. These five bulletins affect NXOS and FXOS. Exploitation of the vulnerabilities may lead to arbitrary code execution and does not require authenticated access. The remaining 16 issues are rated as high. The latest version of the SamSam ransomware is trying to make it more difficult for malware analysis to use automated systems to analyze the malware. Now it uses an old trick here. It asks the user to enter a password to run the malware. And of course the password is provided with the malware itself. Now I said this isn't really a new trick and in the past anti-malware engines have for example tried to find these passwords in emails and such and then use them to decrypt the malware automatically. In this particular case the password is added at compile time so it doesn't change with every individual email instead it just changes with every new campaign whenever they modify the malware. And crypto coin miners reach a new low with 16 arrests in China of individuals that installed crypto coin miners by visiting different internet cafes and manually installing miners on computers in these cafes. Actually it makes me think whether or not display computers in stores could also be used this way. But of course, by having to go to these computers installing the crypto coin miner, they expose themselves and authorities didn't take a long time to catch up with them and arrest them. If you're using OpenVPN, you may know that configuration files have an option to include scripts that are run after the VPN connects or when it is disconnecting. Blogger Jacob Baines wrote about how this feature can be used to run malicious code like reverse shells for remote access by adding them to OpenVPN configurations. I'm not sure how much of a vulnerability this is. OpenVPN configurations are usually not all that elaborate and a script would be relatively easy to spot also. You don't install them all the time from untrusted sources. But then again, users may sign up for less than reputable VPN services 
if they are offered for the right price and then they don't review the configuration file uh, before installing them. So certainly possible that a malicious VPN service like this could send a manipulated configuration file. This could theoretically also be used for privilege escalation. Now OpenVPN has a special crypt security configuration directive to limit what code can be executed, but the configuration file may, be over, may overwrite this so it's possible that you give users access to set up their own OpenVPN configuration files that they could possibly take advantage of this problem. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.